warbling going on there. Well, hello if um, anybody's here, welcome and welcome to this demonstration. Just got my cup of green tea, I'm gonna have a quick slurp. Now, what I've decided to do today, I do seem to have some vibration going on. I'll try and stand still. <laughs> what I'm gonna to do today is a expressive contemporary seascape. And I'm gonna use my um, sketchbooks Interestingly, oops, yeah, I've just knocked the easel again, or tripod. Um, you know, as we're in lockdown, there's obviously not much chance of going to the beach and setting up and doing a, a plein air painting. Um, but these two I did do recently, um, very, very quick, as you can see, watercolour sketches and some pencil drawings. And what I love about these quick sketches is that they have that gorgeous spontaneity, that fluid, fluidity and, and um, I don't know, just ex very expressive. So I want to use these to help inform the painting I choose to do today. This is um, another one, very quick sketch, but much more bold and dynamic. As you see, there's some watercolour pencils been used in there. And there's one more, or two more actually. These are ones that I've collaged into. Uh, you might be able to see there's a piece of collage paper and some bits here that I've basically done a number of sketches on location, brought them back to the studio and collaged to create sort of new compositions and it helps you to really free up and that's basically what I want this uh, little demo to be about, about how to free up. So from these I'm going to be creating a version of <laughs> A seascape. So if I just pop that up there, it may well ping off. Um, I've got myself set up so hopefully you can see quite well. It does seem quite dark there. Anyway, we'll just have to get on with it and make the most of it. So if I move a few things away, I, I do particularly like these two. So we'll we'll see how we go. Um, this one has got quinacridone gold. Uh, there's cobalt turquoise light, there's some indigo, um, I think, to be honest with you, that's about it. And it's the same with this one. This one's got, uh, I think that might one had raw sienna, but um, anyway. Oh, that one's got ultramarine, so actually so has this one, so there you go. It's easy to sort of forget what you've used. So I'm going to pop that to the side, and the idea is that I don't use them to... Um, be exactitudes as it were. I'm not going to try and replicate them completely, but a version from those as my starting point. I've got my my palette that I normally take out with me is, uh, is my go-to today, and I've got two pots of water ready for rinsing my brush. I have a piece of mount board that I'm gonna use to make any drawn sort of marks. I will literally dunk into a colour see a cat's hair there <laughs> as usual <laughs> um, and scrape it around I'm not going to use watercolour pencils today I, I decided I'd use something slightly different so as you can see I've cut it into a, a sort of I don't know any mathematical what's that called anyway it's one of them <laughs> rhomboid wants to come out of my head where the devil that come from I don't know anyway it's probably not but we'll pop that there so I don't forget so um, I've got a square format and hopefully you can um, see this. What I'd like, and I'm just leaning over here to get, is I, I'd like one of these graphite pencils, and uh, this is just going to be, I can draw some marks, but I say, I'm really going to just feel my way around. The idea is to, to have a very loose, expressive painting. Uh, hence, oh, this one, I'm going to be using my size 14. This is from SAA. Uh, Society of All Artists, Kalinsky Round, Sable Brush, um, and it holds so much pigment, it's wonderful and fluid, so it's great. Right, so, hardly any drawing. Oh, just to quickly pop back to these um, collage pieces, what's very, very useful when you use this sort of process is that it helps you to recompose completely a scene that's in front of you or was in front of you to move you forward and to become you know like a lot more free and loose in your style so that's they're really quite useful to it's a useful uh, strategy or technique 
so put that back there so I don't forget it. Right, uh, as I say, I'm not going to be copying particularly. Uh, purely these pieces are going to inspire me, but I rather like some of the drawn marks that are in this one. So I'll be nicking bits, if you like, or each, uh, pieces from each of these will be inspiring my my movements and my mark making. So I'm just going to, you know, and I hold my pencil in a way that allows me to be quite um, free. Um, another thing I've noticed, I've probably talked to you about this before, but because I'm a basically a landscape artist, even though I abstract from the landscape, I do a lot of horizontal marks, hence holding my pencil like that. So I've taken to doing, deliberately making myself do curved marks. Golden rule, I've just broken it. Don't do something halfway. So I'll bring one down there. Okay, do I have a rubber? I do, look, let's get this, erase that mark because it's there, so I'll paint to it. So let's get rid immediately and I'm using a cloth to get those bits off. I tend to put hand cream on my hands so if I was to wipe that now I'd put those cream you know marks on the paper so try not to do that. Okay so let's decide which colours. Um, I'm working on some cardi paper, it's a big sketchbook that um, I often forget I've got, but it gives, because it's got quite a, a high tooth, it's very sort of rough paper, it gives you such wonderful marks when you start painting. So it aids the sort of contemporary effect. Now, at the moment, I'm just putting some water in different places because I want to make sure that I keep a sense of fluidity and randomness to the whole painting, but leaving some areas that are going to be dry. And that's so that they are more um well the painting the paint sorry will be more dense so i'm going to pick up some cobalt turquoise light i have to say this is probably my all-time favorite color and adding some ultramarine to it if you can see this quite clearly yeah so that knocks it back to a, probably more like a cobalt turquoise rather than turquoise blue. Now I'm going to just push this brush across the paper and roll my brush around in a few marks. I love the way that the water is carrying it, that capillary action is getting going already. Love it. I mean, by rolling the brush I'm literally just missing the paper, some of the marks on the paper. Now this area has to be put up there just because of continuity and harmonisation. Just cleaning my brush, dabbing it off on that. I've got a towel, can you see that? It's just slightly off camera. Uh, I want to soften that mark just for this moment. Now, I'm going to go into Oriolin. Just want to, <laughs> because it's going to give this some really sort of acidy, bright colour. Look at that, that goes gorgeous. I've probably said the name wrong but I don't mind. We all say things wrong, don't we? It's um, an odd name for a paint, but it's beautiful. There you are, so really zesty, quite spring-like, isn't it? But not to be confused with a day at the beach. Now I'm going into ultramarine. Tiniest bit of that cobalt turquoise light. If you are changing your colour, your colours throughout the painting, do dip into one of the colours you already made and what happens is it just allows the painting to have some continuity, some, I don't know, um, yeah, continuity. Well, I'm going to put that dark mark there, look at that, oh that's a gorgeous blue. If I'd have just used ultramarine it would have been a bit, a bit flat. Right, I'm going to use the tip of my brush now, picking up some of that paint. I'm just going to bring that around and let it literally sit on the paper. And there, what oh, fabulous colours. Down here. Always dance your brush all over the paper to, as I say, get that sense of harmonisation going on. Your eye is constantly flitting around, assessing where do you need to go next and where to add another colour. And for me, I'm 
being told <laughs> by my painting to go into some burnt sienna which may seem a bit crazy I love this is Winston Newton's uh, burnt sienna and it's so gorgeously orange can you see that that's just fabulous well I just for whatever reason it feels like it ought to go into there now yeah lovely and into there Oh, went into the wrong colour. It's almost as bad as dipping your brush in your tea, isn't it? <laughs> right, coming down here. Oh, look at that gorgeous pot. Oh, if that were to dry like that, that would be beautiful, wouldn't it? Right, I'm just using the side of my brush now to add some of that colour into these foreground areas. That could be rocks or who knows. I'll bring that across. And obviously this is very much the first stage able to be quite loose and dynamic with your mark making. We well, can be anytime. I am going to tip my pad up in just a second and get that to move around. I think it's rather gorgeous. Run out of that lovely colour that I just created. It is such a cardinal sin. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Now I've gone the other way too far. Almost like cobalt blue, but it's just wonderful. Okay, I am now going to pop this down and I want to tip the pad so that it gets the encourages the paints to move around. You'll probably be able to see this sketchbook now if I choose a great big pad, it's huge. I just need to tip this. Um, and let those colours blend. And then I want it to come down. I love that movement. The freedom of it, it's just delightful. Okay, can you see that? Yep. I'm gonna move that one, see if we can move it up a little bit. It does seem rather dark. Tell me if you can't see. Mind you, I've got the camera turned around the wrong way. I can't see if you're making any comments. <laughs> so you can tell me, but I won't hear you. <laughs> I'm just going to clean my edges around the sellotape. I'll answer questions at the end. So sort of sorry for the interruption. Right, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the sellotape. Oh, I'm going to clean my edges around the um, logged into Facebook and you can see the questions but it's a bit past me with the technology that one so I'll, I'll get there right I'm just going to clean my brush because what I want to do is move some of those pigments around see that's puddling a bit too much just there so I'm going to encourage that to move across a little bit that slap bang in the middle that's kind of a bullseye so we're going to have to move that around which is a bit of a shame but never mind Move that bit off. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more of the. This is indigo. I want to just darken this top corner. I'd rather like that light, but I want to darken it a little bit. So we have a bit of a contrast. And you see how this paper is so absorbent. It's, it's like a sponge, it's just going like that. <laughs> and I am gonna put some of the quinacridone gold in. It's just a beautiful color, isn't it? It's so bright and cheerful. Now this one is made by SAA and it has a little bit of Granulation, if I hold that up and let the camera adjust to it, you can see the tiny wee bits of granulation. It's interesting. I quite like it, actually. Just putting that in there. I'm going to go right up to that bit as well. Let's warm that up a bit. I don't know, I'd wanted to go into the um, burnt sienna, but I think probably I should have stuck with the burnt, uh, sorry, the queen gold. It's kind of a bit kinder and a bit warmer. Oh, that's nicer. Like that. Onto that one. There we go. 
I could be going too mad now. <laughs> the old adage, enjoying yourself, put your brush down. And whilst I'm talking to you, I'll do a little bit of promotion. Um, my newsletter is coming out on Tuesday. If anybody would like a copy, do put. You can simply send me to say in the comments, and then I can um, get back to you, or send me a message, private message, and I can get your email from you if you haven't already signed up. I'm exploring um, new ways of reaching people and that is by doing online courses. I've got a couple coming up. I'm just going to have out a few of those colours. Yeah, they basically it uh, you'll learn more from the newsletter. One of them is a sketchbook course actually, which I'm really excited about offering. Yeah, see so you you get carried away, don't you? <laughs> I do. So I'm just lifting some of that colour out. I've got clean water to the side, just going to soften that area there. That straight line is actually going to work quite well as serving as a tiny suggestion of horizon along with that bit. So that will work quite nicely. You can see there how this sellotape hasn't stuck to the paper so it's sleeping underneath and I'm trying to rectify it but it's not going to change it so leave it alone. Right, I'm going to get my pencil out again. I would like to do a few more marks whilst I've got this paper rather wet. I like the idea of just suggesting a few more sort of flotsam and jetsam going on. It's also allowing some of these pigments to settle into the fibres of the paper. If I had a water soluble graphite right now that would give some very powerful marks but I've taken most of it to the new studio and I'm actually working from home doing this so it's a no matter. I'm going to put a bit of a mark there, actually just pulling the paint along, which is rather nice. I like that. Oh, that worked really nicely. Thank you, pencil. And there. But that's all, because it's easy to get a bit carried away. Now, I hate to say this, but I'm going to have to dry this. Um, I've got these fantastic earbud things in that um, I do hope you can hear me, because <laughs> I can't hear a thing. Um, but when I've been recording for some of my new workshops, they they work brilliantly because it sort of cancels out cancels out any sort of outside noise or external noises. So it's brilliant. So I do hope you can hear me. Um, but I'm now going to have to dry this to be able to go further with the painting. So. Start 
start adding depth of colour. So back to my big size 14 sable and getting some more colour together. Right, I'm going to go back into the cobalt turquoise light. Wow, took a lot then. I actually put some new into my well and so every time I go into it it's like masses. <laughs> Absolutely loads of it. Adding a little bit of the ultramarine just for good measure. Then pick up some cobalt turquoise, uh, sorry, quinac quinacridone gold. And can you see that's now gone proper, that's a real cobalt turquoise. That's the cobalt turquoise light, that's very like cobalt turquoise. So I want to just do some bold marks to really like amplify the colour. So I'm going to come in this way now. It's interesting, the little sketch that um, I did at Timoth Beach um, was done with the same size brush. And when you're working bigger, you should always use bigger, bigger brushes. <laughs> did I remember that bit of advice? No. <laughs> Never mind. Well, that's nice. I wanted it to be a bit bolder without losing too much of that really gorgeous spontaneity and lightness that we've got going on a little bit down here. So you're constantly assessing your eye darting all over the place. Well, I'm not going to leave that as it is, just rinsing my brush out. First the dirty water, then the cleaner one. And I'm going to very carefully go underneath and just soften the edge. I say this almost every time I think I do a painting, but let me just remind you of this tip again, because it really is so useful. I'd really like to turn my pad around, but it's a bit of a hoo-ha right now. So I've got a damp, clean brush, and I'm going above the marks that I want to soften so that there's I don't know if you can see it but the water has gone well literally a finger width above that area of paint that allows the pigment to have somewhere to move and the same under here so I'm, you can see I've got my brush underneath and I'm actually being very very gentle with my brush marks just to allow that pigment to meander a little bit and soften and if some of those marks are a bit strong, I can go back in and soften them in a second with them, um, either lifting out with a tissue or my brush. Now that's gone quite strong, isn't it? So yeah, I'm going to roll my brush around this area and see if I can lift it. Oh, there you are. Go back to the much lighter sort of mark. That's nice. And same here. I liked that more yellow kind of effect. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just dabbing around to soften those areas just the tiniest little bit. And cleaning up. I find it so helpful to permit me to focus on what I'm doing, to clean these edges, so that's why I use the sellotape. Although it isn't being quite as successful as it is on ordinary watercolour paper, but never mind. Right, now I'm going to drop some of the indigo in. Mm, the wind has picked up here, goodness. We had rain just now, I was very disappointed. So I really wanted to have some snow, more snow. Actually, I'm going to have to be a bit more bold about my mark making here. I'm being a bit tentative, so that won't do. So I've picked up a bit more water. I'm using the tip of my brush and I want to drop in some areas, literally allow that pigment to have a bit of fun wandering around. Light against dark always works in your artwork. Some down here. And as I've got some dark over there and up there, I need to dance the pigment around the painting. See how the light has changed quite significantly here, but now those light areas are really starting to bounce because you've got the much darker paint. Gonna damp, this one's a rose, oh, worn away, or just about. Rosemary Co size 12, series 33. Lovely soft brush, and I just want to soften that mark that I just made up here, very gently. So far, managing to avoid cauliflowers, which is best on your plate, not in your painting. 
unless it's by intention. Right, gonna go back to that lovely dark. Using the side of my brush and just thinking about where do I want the odd dark mark. I might not put any more in actually, maybe a wee bit here, says I. Fatal, isn't it, saying you won't do any more, but you can't help yourself. You know, if you're having fun and enjoying yourself, uh, what do you do? <laughs> overdo it is what you do. Right, I've just flattened my brush, I'll show you that, sorry. So I've flattened my brush on the side of my palette, so it's quite flat. What I want to do is literally like draw a line, you know those drawn lines I put in now, I'm going to utilise those with my paint here and there. I quite like the fact that it's, it's a bit more um, stylized, shall we say. Again, now this is where I would have to be very careful because it's so easy to get a bit carried away with just mark making and having fun. Nothing wrong with it, but if you're wanting to have something a bit looser, do you know, I'm, I'm almost, almost there actually with this one. Look what I'm doing. Oh, dun, 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 a huge crime. Don't put your gorgeous sable brushes in your water and leave them. Dun, dun, dun. Right, lovely, lovely clean water here. I don't know why these jam jars are reminding me I've just made loads of marmalade. How many of you make marmalade? The trouble is, once you've got it, then you eat it, don't you? I just love fresh bread and I'm gluten intolerant, so I have to either make my own or buy it. And yeah, the trouble is, it's so nice. <laughs> and why not? Why not, eh? Well, do you know what? That bit, I, I actually really like it as a mark, but again, it's that bullseye, it's, it's slap bang in the middle, isn't it? If I was to measure or put a ruler, you know, it's like slap bang in the middle, so it's got to go. What a shame. There we are, I'll just eke it out. There we go, that's much better. I quite like that. Right, um, there's one thing, I'll show you about those areas there. There's one thing that this painting doesn't have, and that is pink. It doesn't have any red or any pink. So, not that I want a lot, but it just needs a touch. So I'm getting my Opera Rose, which pretty much, you'll find pretty much in all of my paintings. So just trying to get a little bit on it. It's so difficult to get it moving without soaking it well in advance. Oh, there's, not, there's a bit. Okay, I'm gonna pop a tiny touch here, there just needs a little bit of a something. It's crazy how that works, but it does. So, and now I'm gonna get carried away, aren't I? Yep, I am. Need somebody here to shout, stop, put your brush down. Now that one might be a bit too strong, cleaning the brush out again. Dabbing it on the towel, soften it across a bit. That one might be a little bit too dark, but it's nice to cheer the painting up. And I'm going to use my larger sable brush. I'm going to gently go across that area just to get a sense of joining the horizon to the sky. I like that area. Just wondering whether to do something here. I said to you about dark, not dark lines, cauliflowers or hard lines. I've got some there, so whilst it's still slightly damp, I'm going to tease that out. There we go. Um, I don't have my watercolour pencils. I'm really a bit fed up with myself. <laughs> no, I actually took them to the studio thinking, oh, that's fine, I'll work on them down there. Ah, I really want to get in there and draw a bit. Um, mm -mm, just seeing if I've got anything. I have, oh, I have an ink tents, whether that's a yellow. Will that work? I just feel I want some drawn lines. And that, oh, do you know what? That's, that's okay, because it's working with the Queen Gold. Just a few, and it's, again, so easy to go a bit crazy. Um, Oh, no, I quite like it, so I'm going to carry on. I love um, ink tents, bars and pencils, they 
create the most amazing effects. Oh, look. Shall I go in there? Yeah, I need to, actually. Oh, yeah, there's a bit there that needs something. And then we need a bit here, just there. Super, if you can take that bit away. Yep, and maybe a few squiggly bits down here. But then I think this one, I'm, I'm about ready to say it's done. So easy to just keep fiddling, <laughs> which I'm doing. There, look, that's, I'm just dampening the brush, the brush, the ink tones, but I want a bit stronger yellow there. If you've done that, you've got to repeat it in a few places. You see, constantly going on and on. And I said I was going to stop, didn't I? Right. That's it. Stepping away. I'll soften this mark here. And. Call it a day. So this painting's now called Call It A Day. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's, I'm happy enough with that one. It's quite cheerful, quite bright. Let's do the taking off of the sellotape. Now this I'm gonna have to be very careful with and pull away. I love to reveal the clean edges. It's not gonna have a clean edge over there. But, oh well, can't with them all, can you? Oh, it's so cheerful. Look, duh, blow my neck. Give my ball clip just a wee bit. That mark's kind of shouting out at me a bit, so we'll just do a few more just to blend it in a bit. There. Right, I'm going to take the camera out of its um, holder <laughs> and attempt to talk to you. So bear with while I send you all over the place. Oh, there we are. Sorry, I could have turned you around. Hello. <laughs> right. Um, so there we are. I've just done a, um, a little watercolour sketch. Um, I quite like it, actually. See if I can read any of these marks, uh, marks of writing. Um, just fab, as you say, cheerful. Yeah, cheerful, if I can do it. Thank you, Lorraine and Brenda. It's nice to have you all here. It's so nice to be back, actually. I must admit, I've not been around, as you know. It's all been a bit a bit much. Third lockdown. Mm, did it for me, totally. But anyway, I hope you're all faring well, and um, we're back. So there we go. Um, I was so vibrant, as you say, cheerful. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah, brilliant. I'm going to turn you around again because I really like this. I'm going to sort of do some close-up on it if I can. Right, where's the turning around? There we are. Let's do that bit. Let, I, let these marks, those colours. A bit cheesed off about that bit, but I can do something about that. Just, I just love these colours that are working. This this paper, this Cardi paper, is actually rather lovely to work on. So, yeah. Wait and see what it looks like when it's dry. So I'll turn you back around again. Oh, it disconnected me for a minute then. I hope you're still there. <laughs> there you are. Um, right. Well, folks, um, I'm going to be doing a weekly demo, um, but I'm also going to start dropping it. I'll, I'll do a thing and write it in, but I'm going to start doing a thing where I'm offering support and help to artists as, like moving forward because there's quite a number of you really working, working very, very well and moving forward. In fact, everybody is, so, you know. I have a glow. This is from the skylight above me, making my hair look even more grey. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, lovely to have your company and I'm going to scoot off now. I'm actually going to go for that walk and see if I can take some photos. So thank you so much. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.